and uh, he's a good friend and he's an acquaintance. And I've always really liked the way he trades and the way he approaches the market. He's a successful professional trader and he's on a mission to educate traders and investors to become experts at what he calls the lost art of chart reading. And more importantly, to understand the interrelationship between volume, price, and activity of smart money in the market. So to that point, his topic today is trading in harmony with the smart money. He's gonna be talking about how to focus on what professional uh, uh, money is doing to under, uh, uncover the true market sentiment before you invest and how to use volume spread analysis for high probability trades. And with that, please welcome Gavin Holmes to the room. Hi, Gavin. Yeah, hi, Rolly. How are you? I'm doing just great. It's good to hear you, buddy. Things yeah. going well? <clears throat> they probably detected I've got the British accent. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not from America. Um, but I lived in Chicago, as you know, for nearly 15 years. I'm married to a Chicagoan. I've got two lovely kids uh, that go to school. But we've moved back. I'm broadcasting live from the New Forest National Park, for those of you that may know it, on the south coast of England. And our big problem for here is not COVID-19, it's a herd of 50 deer that jumped the fence and eat the plants. <laughs> <laughs> That's not that absolutely true. But I've got a picture of 50 deer in the garden eating all the plants. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's terrific. So, Gavin, uh, let's see. Whenever you're ready, go ahead and grab the screen. Yeah. Uh, we hear you loud and clear. Okay. And so tell, me, tell me when you can see my screen. Okay. Perfect. Beautiful. Trading in the shadow of the smart money. We're ready to roll, buddy. Great. Thanks a lot, Rolly, and thanks to everyone at Westmark Associates for inviting me to speak here today. I've worked with Rolly, as you just heard, for uh, many, many years. It's probably over 10 years. Um, uh, let me get straight to it because we're limited for time. Um, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about what I do. I'm a fund manager um, out of Gibraltar, which is a offshore enclave here. I'm also a full-time trader and I run a company called Trade Guider. Let's get straight to the point because we don't want to mess around. So I've written two books. I'm an author of two books. Uh, the first book is called Trading in the Shadow of the Smart Money. Um, and it says use volume spread analysis to understand market manipulation and read charts like the smart money do. And I'm going to talk about that today. I'm a former police officer. I've served with the Metropolitan Police here in the UK and Hampshire Constabulary. Um, I left that many, many years ago and started my own business when I was 25. I'm now 53. Um, and I was very fortunate to meet a gentleman that taught me what I'm going to show you today in this seminar. So um, first of all, um, why did I write the book, Trading in the Shadow of the Smart Money? Because the man that taught me and gave me all his knowledge um, he passed away, unfortunately, in 2016. I was with him. Um, it was a very moving moment for me, but I got the knowledge. And he said, Gav, that's what he used to call me, Gav. He said, if you want to have a calling card for people to understand what I've taught you, you're going to need to write a book. And I can assure you, it took me a long, well, many years, seven years to write the book from when I started in 2007. Uh, I mean, in fact, I started it earlier than that, but that's when it really got going. So I'm going to share with you some of the knowledge that um, I share with all our customers. Um, some of it might appear a little bit contrarian. I make no apologies for that. Um, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm a realist and I want to make money. And that's what I want to teach you. This was Tom Williams, the man that, uh, that taught me. And I, try, uh, I do seminars all over the world, live, well, I used to, not so much this last few months, they're all online, but I do a lot of seminars and I teach people what I was taught. Um, even though I'm a fund manager, I think it's very important to share knowledge and it benefits um, me 10 times because if you give people help, it comes back to you. By the way, I'm not going to be selling you anything here today. I'm just going to invite you to a free live trading session next week. That's it. I'm not going to be pitching anything. I don't believe I need to you will decide if what I'm about to tell you is correct. When we refer to the smart money, um, there are, you know, I, I, I've had this side for, for a, a while. And of course, many of you will, of course, have heard of Warren Buffett, George Soros. We've got the Federal Reserve. Of course, that's changed now. We've got the European Central Bank. And of course, some of you won't know who that is, but it's Greg Kofi, who made an absolute fortune trading. And of course, you've got the fictional character there, Gordon Gecko. But there's a lot of truth in that uh, film, I'm sure many of you will have seen it, Wall Street and Wall Street 2. Uh, just don't, don't ignore that, 
okay? Because I'm going to show you that there are opportunities to be made when markets are moved by big institutions, and I call them the smart money. And trading in the shadow is very straightforward. It means you're going to follow their footprints and you're going to ignore the news. Your president in the US talks about fake news. That's been around in the markets for decades, but we're longer than that. Um, if you, uh, when Tom Williams was teaching me this, and that's his name, I'll show, I'll show you his picture in a minute again. He, he said to me, Gav, professional money or the smart money will do anything in their power to mislead you into making a bad investment decision. Making money in the markets is not easy. Okay, if it was, everyone would be making money, but we know that's not true. But there are a small group of people that do make a lot of money, and there's a lot of retail traders who lose money. I'm going to keep you out of that trap, and I'm going to show you why with some examples. And at the end, I'm going to go to some live charts. This is from the Business Insider magazine. It's um, an article that says, presenting the secret trading strategy from the 1930s that hedge funders don't want you to know about. And so writes Richard Wyckoff. Now, this is what I'm going to talk about today in this presentation. It's the Wyckoff method of trading, which is becoming more and more popular. It's what we use to trade uh, in a fund. It's what we use to try. I've always, that's the only method I really use. And I'm going to show you why volume on your chart is incredibly important. In his 1931 book, The Richard D. Wyckoff Method of Trading and Investing in Stocks, it's a, it's a course of instruction in stock market science and technique. It's out of print and it's somewhat difficult to find these days. It's not impossible. Uh, but even in 2013, when this was written, and so it's got some history here, hedge fund managers still swear by it. One of the key takeaways from the book is that if you want to succeed, you have to learn to recognize the professionals and understand what they are doing. That's what those who follow Wyckoff do. They watch the large operators. Wyckoff walks us through the process of how a large operator will manipulate a stock up or down so that next time one sees it unfolding on the screen before his or her own eyes, he or she can react accordingly. Now, we're looking there at a, a statement about stocks, but this system works in futures, Forex, particularly well um, in stocks, of course, because that's where it started. But it works in all markets that are liquid. So the game on Wall Street, if you're going to play it, you better understand it. And my job today is to show you that there is an underlying factor there that you must understand if you're going to buy or sell. And I'll show it with several uh, historical charts, yes, but then I'll show you it happening right now. So you can be completely um, sure. I'm going to be using the um, Infinity AT futures platform to show you, but I also trade with other platforms as well. Um, we can answer those questions at the end. So where there's money to be made, there's going to be professionals okay, and specialists. We, we, we know professional lawyers, commercial lawyers, criminal lawyers, doctors, heart, in doctors, you've got heart surgeons, you've got brain surgeons. In the banking sector, you've got commercial banking, you, you've got retail banking. In the, in the markets, I can assure you, they're the biggest specialists in the world. And they know how you will think because it's a psych psychological game, the markets. They need to make money. They need to mark prices up to make you buy and then sell it and mark prices down to make you sell and then buy it back. And one of the best examples of that I'm going to show you and it was the stock British Petroleum, which collapsed in price. And then we have one of our volume spread analysis, which is what I'm gonna teach you today, an indicator showing professionals were buying the day after they said, we cannot cap the well, and I'll prove it. I'll prove it. Because when I'm doing these presentations as an ex-police officer with a surname like Holmes, H-O-L-M-E-S, um, some of you will have heard of Sherlock Holmes, the um, famous detective, I ran a TV show here in the UK called Detective Holmes Follows the Smart Money. And that's because I know what to look for. So don't ever trust what you're seeing. Trust the chart, which is what I'll show you. Markets are driven by professionals. And in his book that was written in 1931, and it's still um, rated today, The Richard D. Wyckoff Method of Trading and Investing in Stocks. It's a course of instruction 
in stock market science and technique, Wyckoff explains what we call composite operator. What does that mean? It's the consensus of opinion, which we're seeing right now. And I, I saw the last presenter, um, very good presentation, talking about, you know, people are asking, what do you think the market's going to be doing? We're making historic highs again because the market was shaken out on this negative news. But the market knows something that maybe we haven't taken into account. So I just look at the chart because the chart doesn't lie. Now, this is an obvious statement. But uh, and that's not my cat, by the way. I don't have a cat. I've got a dog. It's a Cocker Spaniel. Actually, American Cocker, Cocker Spaniel imported from um, Missouri. Um, now living in the New Forest, chasing deer, hopefully. But you buy low, you sell high. Now, that, that, that's really a very simple statement. But, you know, most people, the, the general public, they buy high and they sell low. Okay? And that's what I don't do. So many retail traders and investors think even though they, they, they think they're, they're buying at the right time, they see bad news and the market falls and they sell at the bottom for professional money to buy. And then when news is bullish and it looks really good, they buy at tops. But we have a system that shows us when that's happening and it's all based on volume. Because the one thing that volume tells us, it's a footprint on your chart. If an elephant was to walk across your front yard or your front garden, depending on where you are in the world. Um, if you've got a garden, you might be in a high rise, but if, if an elephant's to walk across there, I can assure you it's gonna leave a giant footprint like this. And I'll show you how to read that footprint. And then with other systems that, that people use, we, a lot of our customers use volume spread analysis and the Wyckoff method to confirm they're making a good trading or investment decision. So let's introduce you now to the system, what, uh, what's called volume spread analysis, and I'll show you the website where you can get a lot more information after we finish, and the Wyckoff method, which is taught at the Golden Gate um, University. And, and again, it's, it's actually been very popular now in, in the, the Middle East. Um, we, we've got a lot of customers from Egypt, Saudi Arabia, and also in Asia, um, Malaysia, Singapore, Hong Kong, a lot of people out there, again, following this method. On the left is uh, my second dad, I'll call him, um, because my father passed away in 1999 and I met Tom just after that. Uh, Tom Williams, Tom George Williams, um, he was the, the man that by pure fate uh, came into my life and changed the direction I was going in uh, to become what I am now, which is um, a trader, an investor, a fund manager. Uh, but I never expected to go down that route because um, I had my own exhibition design company, which was doing extremely well, and I didn't think that uh, that direction would, 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 have, would have happened. But I sold both companies, put my money into this company, and I've, I've never regretted it. I've travelled the world, I've been to many, many countries, met loads of wonderful people, so I'm blessed, and, I, and I'm grateful for that. And then on the right is the uh, instigator of all of this, uh, who, who talked about how the markets can be moved it's Richard Wyckoff, Richard DeMille Wyckoff. So Richard DeMille Wyckoff, born um, in 1873, believe it or not, and passed in 1934. He was a stock market authority, a founder, and one-time editor of the magazine of Wall Street. Uh, he founded that in 1907, and uh, the editor of Stock Market Technique. And he said, thousands of those who operate in the markets now recognize the fact that the market momentarily indicates its own immediate future. And that these indications are accurately recorded in the market transactions second by second. And, and therefore, those who can interpret what transactions take place second by second or moment by moment have a distinct advantage over the general trading public. And Tom Williams, who passed in uh, 2016, November the 7th, the day I'll, I'll never forget, but he said, volume is vital in your analysis, which is why the self-regulated exchanges around the world will not release true volume figures until the day after trading took place. So what is volume spread analysis? Very simple. We're looking at three things on a chart. We're not relying on fundamentals. We're not relying on technicals. We're looking at the activity in the volume, which is at the bottom of all good charting packages. In fact, all charting packages, I think, have volume, even Forex. If you're trading MT4 or MT5, um, which is um, uh, a platform that trades foreign exchange, Forex, 
you can get what we call tick volume and it works just as well as I'll show you. Then we're looking at the spread. Don't confuse it with the bid ask spread. It's the high and the low of the bar. That's what the analysis is doing. But most importantly, we're looking at the closing price. And that's because there's three universal laws at play on a chart. There's supply and demand, which you hear about all the time. Effort versus result and cause and effect. Now, those last two are very important. Effort versus result, I'm going to show you. So how can VSA, volume spread analysis, we, we, we hyphenate it to VSA, identify the moves of these big players? Because volume is activity. That's it. You, you, you might want to even write that down. Volume is activity. And we as investors and traders, and I trade intraday, I'm going to invite you all to a live trading session on Tuesday. I'll be trading futures, I'll be trading stocks, and it'll be with my live accounts. There'll be a disclaimer. You'll see the accounts, you can see it. And there's no charge at all. Okay, don't have to pay for it. You just come and see um, us trading. We're interested in volume because it tells us the consensus of opinion, and that's the key to it, but what the big money, the smart money, as I call them, are doing. And then that spread of the bar in each time frame that we use, and we use multiple time frames, confirm what the big money's doing. And that's what we're interested in. We're interested in following what the smart money are doing. But beware of the news, as I'll show you. I'm going to just give you some examples from an old PowerPoint, but I've got multiple examples I'm going to show you next week to show you how the news can actually be detrimental to your wealth if you listen to it. And, it, and, it, and, it, and there are traps, and there's been a trap today in the euro, which I'll show you. And we, we've got a signal that's called a trap up move that identifies it. And here we go back to, we go back in time a bit here because I wanna go back and show you how things work. But ultra high volume is the footprint of the big money, okay? And this particular example is a trade I took, okay, it's a while ago, but it's just such a, because the principles don't change, they're still here right now, as I'll show you, but it's just such a great example. You get here on Southwestern Energy, on the monthly chart, notice the volume as they say, everything's tumbling, it's all going down. But what happens to price? Price goes up. And that's what we call a sign of strength. The SOS doesn't mean save our souls, by the way. It's sign of strength. And it's telling me on this bar, on that terrible news, professional money are buying. This is another example. On the, um, this is on the, the weekly chart. That was the monthly. The weekly chart, we have a signal, an indicator, I'm going to call them. It says indicator information bag holding now why is it called that and tom i said to tom williams when he wrote the software because i didn't write it he did with a, with a programmer a great programmer called bob harwood who unfortunately passed away last year but he wrote this i said well what would you call it bag holding for he said well what's happening gavin he said all this bad news the smart money the professionals if you imagine you've got all this money being dumped into the market they're opening their bags and saying thank you very much i'll take it and the stock rallied massively. But this goes on all the time. I'm going to show you some examples. And in fact, on Tuesday, I'm going to show you five stocks where this is happening right now. We have a scanner in our system, and it's um, one that we're going to launch next week, which can scan up to 10,000 stocks and possibly more for these type of setups. But I can assure you, the news will be terrible when you see this happening. Now, does this work in all markets? Yes, even in spot forex, if you're, if you're looking at this outside the US, because I know in the US and Canada, you can't necessarily trade spot, but I know we've got a lot of people here uh, that are our customers that do trade it. And yes, it absolutely works in spot forex. And I'll just show you an example of how the news works. So this is Mark Carney, who is the previous Bank of, uh, of England governor here in the United Kingdom. And he comes out with a speech on the 13th of June. Well, I don't know why they use Friday the 13th to come out with this information. Now, I've got multiple examples right now of this, by the way, but this is just such a good chart. It shows you the VSA signals. And you get all this news coming out, which is bombarding you with news. Bank of England looks to set to call time on era of record low interest rates. 
Oh, okay. Um, and then you, you look here, it says, talk of rates rise by Christmas at the time this is uh, actually sent out, welcomed by some economists. And what happens? Look at the volume on this price bar. This is called a sign of weakness, which means that professional money are starting to unload their holdings to the, to the herd, as is called in my book. And by the way, you can all get a free copy of my book today. I'll show you where you can get that as a PDF and you can just download it. And I'll talk about, I talk about this signal. It's very important because as a human being, you'll be influenced by everything you're seeing around you. It could be a phone call from a broker saying, hey, everyone's buying. It could say, um, oh, I tell you what, this stock looks really good because it's been going up and up and up. But if the volume is very high, there's two rules I want you to write down. This is what taught me. And the most important one is when weakness appears, meaning that the market's getting sold off. It happens as it's rallying, not as it's falling. Now, that's, that's going to sound completely odd, but this chart absolutely proves it. And then once the market, as I talk about in my book, starts to mushroom, it starts to turn. We look for low volume into the same area because the market maker is holding the price up and we get what we call no demand. That means there's no interest in higher prices here. And this is a, the, the, I, I'm going to show you this live in a minute. So please, I know you can say you can cherry pick in the background. I understand that. And I don't do that. And you'll see on Tuesday, I won't do that. I'll trade live. But the most important thing here is to recognize what I'm trying to teach you about volume. Low volume and high volume, and you can see it's into the same area. See here, you've got the massive volume narrow range bar. It drifts up because of momentum, comes back down, breaks that low, goes back up. The volume is diminishing massively. And that's why volume is so important. No demand. And the same thing happened here in the spot forex market, same day. And this was using a MT5, um, sorry, MT4 platform. Same thing happened, marked up, red indicator, price collapses. And this is exactly why I use the currency futures market with my spot forex trades. I, tr I like to trade currency futures, as I'm about to show you. But you can also trade the NASDAQ, the Dow Jones, the oil. The gold is very interesting today. I want to get to these charts fairly quickly, so I'm going to zip through them. But here we see massive volume and the market slamming down on that volume and the market collapsing. So how is news? and the media and all the financial stuff that's coming out on social media used to trap you. Well, that's exactly has to, how it has to happen. The market has to have losers. It, it can't all be winners. So the news is always used as a mechanism to influence you. Just like we've seen at the moment, there's a lot of bad news around. People are feeling negative. I'm the complete opposite, and so are all my colleagues in the fund. We're all completely the opposite. There, there is stuff going on right now. Of course there's, but there has been for years. There's always something going on. When I first moved to Chicago and went into the office, the first thing they'd say to me, hey, Gavin, what's going on? And I'd go, nothing. Nothing's going on at the moment. I haven't started the day. But what's going on is what's going on. And you just deal with it, and you look for opportunity out of adversity. And I'm seeing a lot of that right now. I mean, we look at some of the negative news, right? Just give you, this is a, a slide that I've used in almost all of my um, seminars, uh, just to show you what happens when bad news appears and what the market does and what the volume does. And we go back to 2011, a long time ago now, we're talking nine years ago. And look at this chart, okay? This is an actual chart of all of the things that happen. Now we know the S&P is up at an all time high, but I just wanna show you how the news is used for the professionals to buy. You've got Lehman Brothers, credit crisis, US government downgraded, US fiscal cliff, tapering. I can keep going. I can keep going. There's, and, then, and then we had Ebola, and then we had SARS, and we had all of this. But the market carried on rallying. So, so you've got to look at that. And I, I, I use this particular chart as a great example. And I, I've also put some of this, these examples in, in my book. Because if you recognize opportunity as the market falls, you're buying lower. So if you go to a market stall and the guys are selling, let's say oranges, or the, or the girls or the guys selling an orange, if they bought it for 50 cents or 50 pence or 50 euros, whatever, 
they have to mark that price up to sell it. They have to mark it up because if they if they mark it down to 25 cents and they bought it for 50, they can't make a profit. The markets work in exactly the same way. They've never changed, which I find ironic. Now, this is the story of BP. Now, you can find a lot more about this on our website, volumespreadanalysis.com, but this is exactly what happened. I did a seminar at MIT in Boston. M most of you will know that, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And I was presenting to the Boston Traders Group and I did my presentation, a bit similar like I'm doing here. But this was a couple of days after they said, we cannot cap the well. And Tom Williams had rung me in the hotel. He said, Gavin, we need to buy BP. We need to buy the stock BP. And I said, Tom, have you? And I looked at the TV and I saw all this spillage and all of this stuff. And I said, there's no, there's no way anyone's going to, if I suggest that BP is a buy, they're going to think I'm mad. He said, look at the chart, Gav. Look at the chart. And do you know something? I did. Now, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to just quickly change my screen. And I'm going to put up here a website that you can go to. And then in a second, you should see it. Right, here we go. And if you look now, you should be able to see a picture of Tom, which I'm sure you can. This is Tom Williams. This is an interview and it's volumespreadanalysis.com. Um, and then under here is a chart, which you can go and have a look at. And this is the month that they said we cannot cap the well. The month. It's a monthly chart with two of our green indicators at a 10 year low. And that stock rallied all the way up to 50, doubled in value. Now, I understand that some of you will be going, hold on, that can't be right. But B B BP was going out of business. So I, I heard on the news that Colonel Gaddafi was going to take it over. And all of this, of course, you'll hear all that. The professionals bought. And once you know that, regardless of any other thing you're doing, you recognize the principles, okay? And, and, that, and that is the key thing. So what I'm gonna show you here, and this is, this is important, um, is and there's my screen now, is what actually happened on the, the smaller timeframes, okay? So this is the weekly chart of BP. All right, and we can see the volume on the down move is absolutely enormous. It drives it up here. This is the, the, the FTSE chart, which is the London market, but it did the same in America. It came back down and then it rallied again. And we had something here, which is sign of strength 83 called a selling climax, which basically what, what that basically means is the market here is being completely we call them shakeouts, but climactic action. Buyers are overcoming sellers. Demand is starting to overcome supply. And that's exactly what we look for. And then what happens when news is good? Right? So you get really bullish news. Okay? It's, it's, it's going up. Everything's going to go up. It's, 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 it's looking really good. This was a great story because I did a lot of YouTube videos on this. And I forecast the decline in gold. And I'm about to do another one. Um, and I'll talk about this next Tuesday, about where gold is going. It's already had a fall today, and I'll show you why. But gold's going to the moon. Goldman, Goldman Sachs, it raises the gold price forecasts. And that was August of 2011. And a lot of friends of mine who were out the market in gold decided to buy here. Absolutely wrong decision. Absolutely 100%. Um, it says we expect gold prices to continue to climb. And given the current low level of US real interest rates, the Wall Street Bank said in a note to um, its investors and clients on Monday, well, that's made public. That, that is made public everywhere. However, we have an indicator, sign of weakness 90, on that very same month, okay, with the very next month closing lower. 
Now, I'm going to show you this on a, on a live chart in a second, so please don't, or in a moment when I finish this. But I forecast that gold was not going to 2000. It was going down, and I forecast initially 1400, but I was wrong. It went further down than that. And it took a while to do it. But that's what we call distribution. Look at point A. Look at the volume. It's selling. And down it goes. And then the gold market and silver market, whether you like it or not, is actually being manipulated. And it has been for years. There's nothing new about this. If I said to you what was the price of silver uh, back in the 1980s, it went up as high as $49. It's never gone above it. Okay, it's just starting to attack it now. But it, 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 so, so if you'd have bought silver back then, you know, it never went above it. And, and, and there's, a, there's a story behind that that I don't have time to tell. But it's also the same with gold. And there was a, a former Goldman Sachs trader, Andrew McGuire, who actually shared this knowledge with people and said, look, the, 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 the positions in gold and silver are being manipulated. And he, he, he did actually get onto um, one of the mainstream papers Right, uh, he didn't get onto the TV or anything like that. They, they they shut him up. But basically, he talked about the manipulation of price, and he wrote this email. Um, and the interesting thing was, he talked about exactly what was going to happen in scenario two, and he talks about only if a market is manipulated could this possibly occur. So the news is good, employment's better. This will result in a massive short position being instigated almost immediately with no move up. This will not literally be liquidation of long positions, what will result in stops being triggered, again, targeting key support levels. That's what happened. That's our trade guide chart. Look at the volume on my day. It's exactly what happened. They, they, they triggered all the stops from support and then brought it all back on that bar with the green indicators. And this is how it works. If you, if you don't understand this, you're, not, you're, you're going to struggle to make money because you're, you're not going to be aware of what's going on. And my job is to make you aware. Now, I talk a bit in my book about the Yao Ming bar, and it's an affectionate term because I'm a big fan, uh, or was, of Yao Ming before he retired, who used to play for the, the Houston Astros. And he was a basketball player. I used to support the Chicago Bulls, I used to go and watch them. But this guy was pretty tall. You can see here, if you met him in the street, you're not going to have any problems knowing that that's a very tall person. And look at this. If you imagine all those volume bars were human beings, then you'd have Yao Ming here and here. But it's got a green signal on it, a green indicator. What does that mean? Demand is overcoming supply. Simple as that. And we don't trade it there. We don't buy it here. We buy it in here. And the reason is very simple, because we've changed behavior in the market. If you want to understand that term, there's a, a very good book by uh, a friend of mine, David Weiss, W-E-I-S, David Weiss. It's on Amazon. It's called Trades About to Happen. And he talks about, and he taught me this. He's a very experienced Wyckoffian. And he, he said, look, what you see is the climactic volume, but they're going to need to test it, as I'm going to show you. And once they test it, you get a change in behavior, then you can buy. And so we had something here, which is known as a shakeout. It's again, it's a very strong sign of strength in the market. The news is bad. There's probably going to be, and it was in this case, they, they literally marked it down on news and then brought it back. And a lot of traders that use stochastics, moving averages, similar, will be getting short right at the wrong time here. And, and, that, and that's bad. That's not what you want to be doing. You want to be looking at the volume. Now, that you, you might say, well, hold on. Yeah, that's a daily chart. How do I time it? We have a system that does it because it, use, it uses multiple time frames, as I'm going to get to very shortly before I take questions. And in the book, we have something called a trigger number, which is explained, which is very, very logical. There's, not, there's no rocket science to it. If the market has come down on this high volume and then it bounces back up over it, and takes out the top of the high volume bar and then retraces on very low volume, that has to be bullish. And that's what happens. The market rallies. And the news will always be pretty much bad, especially in stocks. 
And then we look for something called a test. And I've got a very nice chart to show you um, of, a, of a stock that's, that, that's happened to recently um, when I finish this, this PowerPoint. And you did the testing and then you get no supply. And what does no supply mean? It's simple. The market retraces, the volume dries up, meaning they've bought back here. Professional money have accumulated their position. And as the market moves down to the lower end of the trend, I, I always use trend channels. Some, some people don't. But look, it diminishes every day before they mark it up and up it goes. This is one of my favourites, and, and I've got this in the book, but I have to show it because it's, it's still one of my favourite um, situations. Qantas nosedives on profit warning, and that we've, we've heard this again recently, and I think there's an opportunity to buy it. Now, you might think I'm mad, but there well could be, and I'll show you what it's going to look like. This is what the headline was, um, and it was in the Sydney Morning Herald, but there, it was all over um, financial... Um, magazines and stuff that Qantas is in serious trouble and then you get this picture of this this chap doesn't look very happy does he he, he looks like oh my goodness I, I just bought all those shares but they dived to a 90 percent they, they they're slumped by 90 percent now you might look at that and go what you wouldn't want to be buying that but then we had an indicator look at the volume here it's a shakeout absolutely massive volume on the down move you can see it then the market moved up and down into the area they tested it look at the low volume and i told you about that earlier as the market retraces into the area lots of green indicators rally but the news here was terrible richard nay who was an american um, he lived in beverly hills and he was an actor and then became an investor. He wrote several books on the market and his Rolls Royce, which was a very nice Rolls Royce, had a number plate on it. And it was W-A-K-E space U-P, wake up. And that's what I'm hoping to do for you here today and show you how you can get knowledge. It doesn't mean all the knowledge you're gonna get, or you're gonna get a lot of knowledge from these webinars. And you'll have to pick and choose or you can amalgamate that knowledge but this is one thing that works this system works particularly well to confirm or deny what you're being told you know are you going to invest in this are you going to buy this are you going to sell this if you looked at your chart and you understand the chart you'll make a much more informed decision this is called a reversal which i've just seen um, at the top on on the euro it the bottom reverse into the same area all of the indicators have numbers in our system and explain to you what the market's got. They're not buy and sell signals at all. They're not meant to be. They're meant to teach you how to read the chart. And then we do have a system which will give you much clearer indications as to where to enter. And then you've got what we call accumulation here. This is buying on this low. You can, you can see that the, the buyers have come in. You see all these indications. Do you get red indicators as they're, as they're accumulating, of course you do, because the professional money don't want to put the prices up against themselves too quick. They want to buy at lower prices over time. Tom Williams told me it took seven years once for him in, back in the 1970s to accumulate a stock called Taladine. So it, it takes time. But nowadays it's, it's happening much quicker. Now, here's the funny thing. You've seen all that bad news, right? Terrible. Here's a few years later, it was only three years later, Qantas underlying performance in 2015, excuse my Aussie accent, was the best in its 95 year history with underlying profit to rise into 992 million. Right, that's the, there you go. So you'd think, okay, and that was all over the news. And I was in Sydney at the time, and a fellow said, I'm buying 5,000 shares in, I don't think it was more than that actually, I think it was 50,000 shares in Qantas. Um, he said, because it's really going to go up. He said, it's, you know, they've got rid of, the, they're looking really good. And I said, well, let me have a look at the chart. So I did. And there was one of our indicators in here on massive volume, sign of weakness 21, end of a rising market. On the day that came out, that stock tanked. Now, if you're not getting this, you will do once you think about it and absorb it. Because this is how the markets have to work. You have to get the herd, the group, into buying 
at tops like this, and then you have to sell to them. That's how you make money. And it's the same at the bottom. And then of course we have what I've just shown you earlier, at this top, the market goes up into the area, there's no volume because they've already sold. This has to be logical because this is how the markets work. Supply and demand, cause and effect, effort versus result. So this is how it works. It's really straightforward. I, 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 I sometimes, I suppose, when I'm doing these presentations, I know a lot of you are new to this. You go, hold on a second, the market's going up. My MACD says buy, my stochastic says buy. And then when you lose money and you get stopped out, you go, what just happened? You've got to look at the volume. That's what we'll teach you. And this is what happens. You, you, you get this situation here where, where you get this, uh, you buy a stock and it goes up and you get your forex and you say, oh, this looks really good. And then suddenly there's a, there's a down day. And you go, oh, hold on a second, uh, that, that's fine. It's going to be fine. And then it goes down further. You go, oh, no, hold on, hold on a second. No, that can't be right. I'll hold on, I'll hold on. And then you start to get fearful because it's gone down 20% maybe. Then it jumps another 10%, desperation. And then this is where the professional money look for. They look for the capitulation. They look for the, uh, the uh, herd or the group or the un... And it, this happens to actual fund managers too, where they capitulate and say, oh, I'm done, I'm finished. And then up it goes. That's what happened with BP. Same thing. So the basics are, are very straightforward before I, I take some questions. Wyckoff stu studied market uh, action based on volume price analysis. Uh, Wyckoff determined, most importantly, as we did, where risk and reward were optimal for trading. Wyckoff studied the psychology of trading and why smart money buy and sell at a certain time, which they do. And Wyckoff explained, as, as does uh, Tom Williams, uh, and, our, and our fund is called Wyckoff Williams for a very good reason, because both of those geniuses have helped us learn to understand chart reading. And so Wyckoff explained the shifts between the weak holders to the strong holders. Uh, which we call smart money. And then Wyckoff talked about the composite operator, which is the big players all interacting, trying to find where the market's going. And sometimes you get whipsawing, it goes sideways because they're fighting it out. But many times, as I'll show you in the Euro today, that, that doesn't happen. So it, it's very straightforward. There are, there are two types of market participants out there. They're the herd, and I, and I don't want you to be part of that. What I want you to do is be the predator in the market. And I know that's why um, Westmark Associates put on these events is to teach you different ways of looking at the market. Our way is very unique. It's contrarian, for which I make no apologies. Um, it's been around for many, many years. Our company's been around. In fact, when we bought the company from Tom, we're now about 35 years old. So we're not new and we got to thousands of customers from about 32 different countries, I think, when I last counted, but it's gone up. So, but it does take a little bit of study. There's no two ways about it. Now, we have got a live trading event where we're going to look at stocks. We're going to do a stock scan, okay? There is no charge. We don't want any money for this. Um, I'm going to give up my, my Tuesday. It could be together to three or four hours. I don't know. It depends what the market does. But you can go to www.tradeguider.com. And if you click on the events tab there, and it, there's a link at the top, you'll see it says events. Um, we do a regular one every Tuesday now. It was Wednesday. We're doing them Tuesdays because we're getting much better market movement. And um, you're, you're more than happy uh, if you want to join us. You become, um, there, again, I'll, let me be very clear on this. There is absolutely no charge. OK, um, so we're not asking you for any money here. We want you to come and see us, see what we're doing, see how we trade. We will trade Forex stocks futures. Most importantly, we'll probably be trading gold because that's what I specialize in. But we'll also look at the Nasdaq and I'll go to the to, to the live charts in a second. Um, so, yeah, that's I'll, I'll leave that up. It's tradeguider.com. Um, it, it's a very easy thing to remember, um, just tradeguider.com. If you click on the events link or you click on the free resources link, you'll get my book and you'll get the first book and it's a PDF. It's full color. You can print it if you wish. And then if you've got questions, we have a, um, a system where on Tuesday, you, you'll be able, uh, certainly be able to ask me directly what those questions are. So let's go to the live charts. 
and we're going to go straight first of all to this one here okay you should all be able to see here a chart of fedex okay so you've got that i can see that good so i talked about testing it in a market and we can see in this chart um and this is the scanner that i'm going to show you next week i can't show it now there's just simply not enough time um but this is what we call testing the market now here the accumulation comes in but we start to change behavior here with these green diamonds we have a test gavin we mm -hmm. I interrupt but we're uh, seeing a, a dark screen i don't think your screen share has kicked in yet oh okay let me try that thank you we're good uh, i'll leave you back at yeah, it you know, it we don't we don't want to see a black screen because that's not going to teach no. you anything that's correct <laughs> so so here we go we, we we've got these things called tests all right and and these, and these things um they come in and what happens is the market pulls back on very very um light volume very low volume and it comes into an area where the market's broken out which is what's happened here and th what we look for is we have a trending system that i'm about to show you and hopefully when i share my other screen I'm going to show you that before I take questions, because I know um, we're, we're, we're tight for time at the moment. But all of this is explained in Trading in the Shadow of the Smart Money book. So I, I don't need to go a lot into it. But you can see here, this scanner, basically what it does, we do a scan every week. Um, and it scans all the stocks that are acting stronger than the index. Now, the index here, in this case, is the S&P 500. And this particular stock is outperforming the index. And I'm not surprised because in England, delivery companies are going through the roof. I've got, I've got shares in five different delivery companies because that's what everyone's doing. So they're making serious profits. So FedEx, not surprisingly, is strong. And, and it's been picked out with, with this scanner. But on the opposite side, you get what we call weak stocks where the market starts to move down against what the index is doing. Um, this is a good example. Uh, this is Western Digital. You can see that the stock is moving lower, but the index is going higher. And so these are the sort of things, if you're an options trader, I trade options as well. And I, I, I do agree with the previous speaker. I think Think or Swim are very, very good with, with that, um, TD Ameritrade. You, you can, and, and, and we, well, I use Lansdowne Hargreaves here in the UK, uh, and they're very good as well. But um, what, what we see here is, the market trying to rally, which it does successfully, and this stock is a laggard. Now, I don't care what the news is, and I don't mind that it's doing it. It's just a very simple question is why, okay, I don't want to be long here because there's weakness here in this area. There's weakness, it's, it's not strong. So finally, let me go to, um, we'll go to some live charts here and let me just reduce that down, okay. And then I'm going to put up a chart here. And again, I'll just ask if you can. This is this is a, a short trade I took earlier on the um, the uh, the euro. Um, I'm going to wait to share the screen, which I'm going to do now. And there it is. Okay, can can you all see that? I just want to before I start speaking because it's starting to fall now again. Yes. Can everyone see, see that? Yep. yep. It just came okay. up, Gavin. Good. Good. Okay. This is the my infinity futures um, charts. Um, uh, that's how actually I met uh, Rolly was through infinity and Marcus Heitkutter, as I'm, you know, Marcus. Um, but th this is a classic uh, VSA setup before I take questions. Um, what, what we see here, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, Rolly, you can ask the audience, where do they see the highest volume on this chart? Just, yeah. just, just if you look at the question, because I can't see the question panel, but wh okay. where do they see the highest volume on this chart? Da, 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 da. Where's the highest volume, guys? It, this is a quiz. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I <know>. a, it's <laughs> a quiz. The red bar is all the way up. Eight yeah. o'clock. Right there. Okay, right here. Right, and I'm just gonna remove this. Let me just move this panel down. Let me just see if I can move that. There we go. Right. Just gonna put the thing right. Now I told you about what I call a trap. 
by the professional money, right? This is called a false breakout. It's broken out of this old area. It's a 60 minute chart, let me be clear. And on it here, done. Right, a trap up move. Sign of weakness, number 58. And the market's falling as we, as we speak. I've already been short in here earlier on and I closed my position because I was obviously going to be doing this seminar, but it's still falling because of this one here. Now these lines, are again explained in the book. So I don't really want to explain them now. They're called trigger numbers. They're very powerful. And these little dots that you see are resistance or support. Now at the moment, we've got serious resistance and we had it at 1.18500. This is the 6E currency futures contract traded with the CME. Okay, and, and it's, um, as you can see, it, trade, it, it immediately after this massive trap began to change behavior. Now, how we identify a change in behavior is I call it the mushroom. It's been going up and up and up and up and up and up and then down she moves. Okay, all the way like this. It's a change in behavior on the hourly chart. So that's been trending down now for the best part of 20 hours and it's gonna continue, just so you know. All right. And this signal here is confirming what's behind me. Supply on that very high volume bar is coming in, meaning sellers are controlling because look at where the close is. Supply is overcoming demand. And to finish off with, before I take some questions, gold. Now again, Rolly, we'll, we'll do a little quiz here, but if anyone gets this wrong, I'm, I'm gonna be, be concerned, but can everyone see where the high volume is? <laughs> it's, I mean, I, 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 I hope no one says it's to the, I mean, it's, it's, it's about as obvious as it gets, which is why I'm ready to talk this. <laughs> yeah. Right there in the middle, I'm trying to look at the screen here. Let me see here, We've got several people writing in. The blue bar, the blue bar, the up thrust. It's, 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 a, it's actually supply starting. It's, it's the start of the mushroom that came over. Um, I haven't, I, I'm not sure how to annotate that, but it doesn't matter. I, I'm not familiar with them. Um, um, we, we may be moving over to Zoom because apparently a lot of people like it, but um, we use go to webinar. But basically, look, it, it's mushrooming over. We're now into a key area for tomorrow. Absolutely key. In, in fact, what, what we, we, we could indeed see, indeed see here is what we call no demand in here. And if the market breaks that low here at 1940, I'm going to be shorting it very quickly. It's a, tr it's a trade setup. It's, it's VSO, but we can't do it immediately. What I want to see is the market take out these two areas of this massive volume. But you can see that why wouldn't I short on that bar, even though it did fall? Because it then rallied again, and you have to wait for the market to come back into the area. Now, how we do this is we have something called Smart Center Pro. And this is what um, I'll finish on. This is a piece of kit that I'll be using on Tuesday. Uh, and it, uh, we've seen already on the Japanese yen, if I click on it, everything's starting to get ready for tonight's trade for me because I'll be trading through till four in the morning on the yen. And it measures the volume on each of the time frames. Now look at the time frames. It's a one minute, two minute, three minute, four minute, five minute. But then I go as high as the 15, the 60, the four hour daily and weekly. But we can see the four hour, the 60, the 15 and the five are all in alignment at the moment to the downside. And in the 6J, the setup's coming. I mean, it won't be here, right? I'm, I'd love to take a live trade right now, but there you can see what the chart looks like. You can see all the weakness appearing on these up moves like this, and now we're falling. And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes my presentation. Um, if, you know, Rolly, if any questions, we've got three minutes left. I'm happy to take them. Sure, sure. Uh, let me go ahead and grab the grab the screen here for a second, Gavin. Once again, thank you for <laughs> thank you for a great presentation, and uh, thank the uh, deer for not eating through the wall, <laughs> or, whatever, or whatever deer do. <laughs> Yeah, eat my plants. Yeah. <laughs> eat your plants. But anyway, um, there, yeah, there were some questions that came up here. Can you please explain how an accumulation is about to end? And how can we know that the uptrend is starting? 
Yeah, very simple. You mark the top of the very high volume bar, and I use I use the daily charts on this. And then once the market penetrates that bar, so it, the price action moves to the top of that very high volume bar, mm -hmm. you watch the volume as the market retraces, as I showed earlier. And if it comes down on very low volume into that area and then responds again with not excessive volume, but just a little bit of increasing volume as it pushes higher, that means that that market's going to turn. And I've seen, I, I'm going to show a lot of these stocks that ha that's been happening on. Um, because when we, when we had the COVID-19 problem, a lot of stocks did exactly that. Sure. And also, you know, going back to several people kind of chimed in uh, right at the beginning of your presentation when you were talking about market manipulation. And so the question is, is the market being manipulated now? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. 100%. Yes. So there you go, folks. And it's good to know about that, be able to spot that. And I think from that perspective, once again, Gavin, I just want to thank you so much for your time today, chiming in all the way from England. Folks, if you see here, Gavin with Trade Guider, he's got a live webinar that you've all been invited to next Tuesday, September 8th. Uh, where he's going to be giving a hands-on review of how uh, volume spread analysis at work. He talked about getting a copy of the uh, of his ebook, and uh, once again, all you have to do is go to Trader uh, Trade Goddard. Uh, bah, let me back up for a minute. Trade. I can't even say it. <laughs> yeah, I'm just sitting there going, "What am I tripping over my time?" Tradeguider.com, <laughs> and if you go to events you'll see a link for you that you can basically register for that. And uh, once again, you've asked so many good questions here, but Gavin will be hands on with the charts and he'll be able to show you and explain to you in greater detail what he's seeing. And I think he's also proved to us that a lot of what we think is happening is actually contrary to what is actually going on. And that's that manipulation he was talking about and tools and techniques for how to spot that. So Gavin, once again, thank you so much for your time. Delightful seeing you again we're going to have to catch up <laughs> yeah we will do and uh pat and nikki lovely to meet you and uh, rolly thanks very much and uh, i'll leave the webinar now and you can hand over to the next presenter thank 